Oh, she's the most beautiful woman in the world. All wives, don't be jealous. I'm talking about my own. Now, if you are staying here, your husband, you tap your husband and say, husband, this is how to talk about me. The most beautiful woman in the whole wide world. Every day I look at her, I just see God's glory just manifest continuously. Especially for me and for the house of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> no co- Thank you, Brother Samuel. <laughs> no contest. She wins all the time. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> we are in a new dispensation. And there are a few things that you need to do in this new dispensation. You know, I love it when God shows us what steps we need to take for us to move forward in life. It's always important for us to take note of those steps he asks us to take. They are always for our glory. They are always for our blessing. They are always for our promotion. God never instructs us to do anything that will bring us down in life. Everything God instructs us to do is for us to advance in life. It will not make him to be more God than he already is. He is already God. Nothing changes that. He's already full of glory. He's the Lord of blessings. He's almighty God. No matter all the raving in the world, nothing can change that God is God. But for us, he wants us to make progress. He wants us to advance because he has put us here on this earth for us to showcase his glory. Hallelujah. And so in a new dispensation, what are you going to do in a new dispensation, in a new season like this? 2022 is a new period. It's a new season. It's a new plan for your calendar. 2022 is not necessarily God's calendar. It is your own calendar. What are you going to do within this period? How do you, how do you function when you get into something new? How do you function? I want to give you some general guidelines or start to give you because I don't, I'm, not, I'm unsure we'll be able to just get to the end of it. But I'll start to give you some general guidelines. Glory to God. One is drop old baggage. When you get into a new dispensation or into a new level in life, drop old baggage. You know, I, I, I remember, okay, let me use this example. A wonderful, funny example. When I came to, you no, know, I'd spent many years in Nigeria. Yes, I spent uh, um, some while outside Nigeria. Then I came back to Nigeria, then spent many years there before I then left and came to Australia. Okay, and then okay, within that period, went to some other countries again, then came back. But I mainly principally was there before coming here. And then when I came here, I had changed the Nigerian currency Naira into dollar. Some of it, and then I still had some Naira remaining that was not changed, okay, which I carried with me. And then my wife and I, the first place we lived in was a student accommodation somewhere in Box Hill. Very nice accommodation, nice. Right? Even though it was as cold as you could imagine. And this, the heater was on, but the heater was really not on to us. To other people, it was very on, but to us, 31 degrees in that room was equivalent to 19 or 15 degrees. You know? And the heater would heat the upper part of the air and leave the down part. And we were sleeping on the bed while the upper part was hot. So sometimes we'd wake up I remember those moments who will we, we'll freeze on the bed. Then, oh, at that, then I learned the importance of marriage being doubled. No wonder my uncle said, don't leave Nigeria without your wife. If I had left without my wife, I would have experienced cold, the trauma of cold. You know, when you are holding on to your wife and your body's deep, like this. And then I asked the person in the place, the, the guy who, was, who, owned, who owned the place, I asked him, his name was Jason. I said, Jason, can we get heater from, can we buy heater from? He said, no, 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 no. If you use your own heater in the room, the, um, the fire alarm will trigger. And when it triggers, fire service will come. And when fire service come, they will charge 10,000, 30,000. And I was like, Hoy. 
not knowing he was trying to reduce his bills. That was just the thing. Was it that there was any central fire alarm, anything? Right? What a wonderful time that was. Anyway, when we got, well, that, 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 that place we were in, we were paying $310 per week. That was our bill for one room. $300, nice room, very nice, well furnished, everything. But $310 per week. And the first time I removed that $310, I didn't look at $310. I changed the figures to Naira and calculated it in terms of, ah, ah, I was like, dear, go 310 multiplied by, hey! I said, this is just one week alone. Then when we wanted to buy something, the money was quoted in dollars. We transformed it into Naira before we made the payments. Even though we were carrying dollar, our minds still continue to go back to Naira, 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 Naira. And so each time we're calculating things, we're still going back to Naira. But after a while, we learned how to drop old baggage. Glory to God. Tell your neighbor, drop old baggage. We learned how to drop that mindset. And then we started calculating in dollars. And from then on, Naira became not an issue anymore. We've dominated Naira a long time ago. Hallelujah. Dominated it. For some of you, that might, be, that, that might have been your experience. You know, coming in for the very first time, when they tell you, ah, you are going to pay 1,500 and something dollars per month for your, yeah, your head will just go, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you calculate it back to the currency, you just learn to drop old baggage. Drop it. Sometimes there are old baggages of experiences that you have had in 2021 that you need to drop. Sometimes there are old baggages of friends that are totally discouraging that you need to drop. You learn how to drop old baggage. You enter into a new level. It's not everybody that will be happy with your new level. There are some who will be delighted for you to stay where you were before. Because where you were, they were comfortable with you at that level. But now that you have ascended to a new level, they will not be happy with you and they will not want to move along with you to your new level. What are you going to do? Drag them along? No. You learn how to drop old baggage. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Am I talking to someone? Drop old baggage. Sometimes there are some X's and Y's and Z's that may have mistreated you in 2021. And said nasty things or done nasty things to you. This 2022, drop old baggage. Glory to God. Tell someone around you, drop old baggage. Drop, old baggage. drop those old baggage. Just leave them behind. Leave them behind. You have gone ahead. Hallelujah. You have gone ahead. Sometimes it might be stories that have been told about you. Negative tales that have been told about you that were so hurtful. To your life in 2021. I mean, the more you thought about the nasty thing this person said, and the nasty thing and the nasty thing, it was so hurtful to your life. Now you have gotten into 2022. Drop those old baggage. Drop it behind. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Drop old baggage. Get a new job. Drop old baggage. You've graduated from one level in uni to another, maybe from bachelor's to master's or from master's to PhD. What are you going to do? Drop old baggage. Very important. Isaiah 43, verse number 18. Few scriptures in these lines. See if you can display that for me. Isaiah 43. And verse number 18. Bible says there, remember ye not the former things. Remember ye not the former things. Neither consider the things of old. Remember ye not the former things. Neither should you begin to consider the things of old. Someone got divorced and married a new person. And then, now in the new marriage, the person is busy considering the old and comparing the new with the old. What a shame. The person should have dropped old baggage. You can't be comparing the old with the new. 
The new has come now. Keep your eyes on the new. Hallelujah. Forget about the old. Whether it was a man, whether it was a woman. In as much as you are not the one that asked for the divorce. Okay, very important. You're not the one that asked for it. Because if you are the one that asked and requested for the divorce, that's a different matter entirely. Okay? But in as much as the divorce occurred because the other party asked for it, oh, that's so good. You just drop old baggage and move on. Hallelujah. God has something more glorious for your life. Praise God. Something more glorious. Someone was in a relationship with another, and then the other person said, oh, you know what? I quit. I'm done. I'm, ev I'm finished. I'm done. Well, the person is the one that is finished, not you. You have just moved on to a higher level. Hallelujah. What that person is planning for your evil, God is working it together for your good. Can somebody say amen? amen. Yeah. So remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. That's what the Bible tells us. So more, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 12. And verse number 1. The Bible says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed with so great a cloud of witnesses, it says, let us lay aside every weight, that is, drop baggages, things that will stop you from moving on, ascending into a new level. He said, lay them aside, drop them aside. Those negative thoughts, those tales, those memories, say, drop them aside, lay them aside. They are weights. They will stop you from moving forward. Said you are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. There are angels that are watching you in your life. The saints are in heaven are watching you. And many here on earth are also watching you. Glory to God. So you lay aside every weight because there are many who are witness in your life. And he said, and the sin which doth so easily beset us. Those things that cause us to veer away from God's plans for our lives. They are sins which doth so easily beset many. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. God has a race set before you in 2022. Hallelujah. And you're going to run that race with patience. Glory to God. Tell me about this year. You're going to run with patience. You're going to run with patience. There's a race set ahead for you. So what? For you to run a race, you need to drop the baggage. If you're going to run a race and you're going to run and win then you don't want to be carrying big stone on your hand, another big one on your head, another big bag behind you. I mean, can you see someone packing baggages and luggages around and the person is running on a racetrack? That person is going to be the number one loser. In fact, the, pe <laughs> the person already lost before the race began. You know? The person is going to lose on losing yourself. Get rid of all those stuff. That's why you find people that want to run a race, you don't see them even wearing heavy clothes. They wear light clothes. So that there's not, nothing weighing them down. The less the weight, the better. I'm sure for some of them, if it were possible for them to wear no clothes at all, that would have even been best. You know, but they want to run a race to win. So they want to drop all the baggage. No suits, no bags, no nothing. Leave the, no Ola Boshkariga Bahaya. No wonder Jesus said to his disciples, said, when you go to go and preach the gospel, carry no bag with you. Carry nothing with you. Don't allow any baggage to go with you. Because he knew that there was a race that was set ahead of them. Hallelujah. You don't need baggages in your life. Glory to God. Sometimes it is baggages of family. You've been carrying the family baggage for how long? They've been, they've been on you. It's been your, they have, I mean, they've been on you every time. All the while you have been in this nation of Australia, it is send me money. Send me, send me, send me, send me. You have just been Mr. and Miss, oh, <laughs> Mr. or Miss or Miss. Bringy, bringy, that has been your name, ATM. That's all you've just been doing is just carrying the baggage of family. Family, the more you, 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 the more you send, the more you must send. And the day, if that's your life, it's good for you to begin to ask God for wisdom on how to send. I'm not telling you don't send at all. But I'm asking you to send with the wisdom of God. With the wisdom of God. So that it doesn't become that their love for you is just based on the amount of money that you have to send. Then the day you don't send, you become enemy number one. You see the truth of the love. Sometimes 
and tell them, maybe you might have some money to send. In fact, maybe bigger than you even wanted to send before. But you tell them, I'm having some serious challenge now. And then watch and see who will really love you in there. Some of them might just despise you for the next three months. They don't, in fact, those that used to call you before will no longer call you because you have become useless. Then you know their love for you was not really a love for you. It was a love for the money that you were sending. Glory to God. Wisdom at work. Hallelujah. So baggage. I want to get rid of baggage so that you can run your race effectively. Glory to God. Give you another scripture. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 9 from verse 16. The words of Jesus. Matthew chapter 9 from verse number 16. No man puts a piece of new cloth into an old garment. No man puts a piece of new cloth into an old garment. For that which is put in to fill it, to fill it up, take it from the garment. And the, take it from the garment. And the rent, the tear that was being amended is actually made worse. What's Jesus saying here? When you try to mix old cloth with new cloth to make them to sew one cloth, or you want to make a, mend a patch, and you put a new one to mend up the patch, you actually make the garment to become worse. You cannot mix the old and the new together. And then he goes on further. No wonder when we are born again, we are born completely new. God doesn't mix the old man and the new man together. No, he says you put on the new man. You put on the new man. It's not a mixture of an old you and a new you. No. You are completely new. Praise God. Hallelujah. Totally new. So he says there in verse 17, he says, Neither do men. So he likens, he further explains what he's talking about. He says, Neither do men put new wine into old bottles. They don't put new wine into old bottles. Else the bottles break. And the wine runs out. And the bottles will do what? They will perish. But they put new wine into new bottles, and both are preserved. Hallelujah. New wine into new bottles. So, you know, this year, as you are doing things, you want to do some things that will become new. If you have been used to buying, there's this thing we used to call okrika. It's still in Australia. They have it, many. Okay? That is old, discarded item that is renewed for you, redusted, so that you can wear the cloth. Eh? Second Life. Oh, thank you, my dear. Ah, Second Life was a movie one time. <laughs> Second Life, Second Hand Goods, you know? So you are used to going to Salvation Army to do your shopping. This year, you can make up your mind <laughs> and say, no, I'll be the one to give my old clothes to Salvation Army. Can somebody say amen? amen. You give your old clothes, you donate them to Salvation Army. And then you go to at least, at least for a start, you can start from Kmart. At, in fact, I don't recommend Kmart. They were very nasty to the unvaccinated. <laughs> don't go there. Go to Target and Maya and other senior places to do your shopping. Hallelujah. Yes. You know, go there. Anyone that was nasty to unvaccinated people, Kale, Boze, Gebo, Sagaba, Andes, Koya. Mm, you cancel them. We also have cancel culture in the house of God. We can cancel them. Glory to God. <laughs> no, this year you can decide. New stuff is what I'm going to be into. You want to look out for a car? You don't, don't let your mind just go immediately to the old ones. How do I get, you know, you know for some, the, the, you, you have the money to buy the car. It's not that the money is a problem. You have the money to buy the car. But the challenge is just that your mindset just goes to 20,000 Ks plus. It, it, you know, it's that you, you need to change the mindset. So immediately you just start doing a car search. And from there you have already started 20,000 Ks plus. 19, nine, nine, uh, 1997 model upwards. Why must you be like that? <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Even if you want to go back to search something, why don't you just go from two years behind? You know, maybe you just start saying 2019 upwards. And then you start searching from zero to up, you know? Glory, Glory to God. Yeah. Unless you begin to, you begin to change your mindset in this way, 
you will find that those things that are new, you will not find them. You will not find them around you, not because they don't exist, but just because your mindset hasn't yet changed. And that's why it's important for you to change your mindset. Hallelujah. Jesus said, new wine in new wine skin. This year, your body is fresh. It needs to wear new clothes. Hallelujah. It needs to wear new perfume. Glory to God. Perfumes are not expensive. Maximum $100. Glory to God. You can change things. Hallelujah. How we are changing for the best. Tell the person, this year, I'm going to look so sweet. I'm going to smell so sweet. You are going to enjoy my presence. Hallelujah. Bible says, present your body a holy and a living sacrifice. So your body should be... <laughs> but if you are preparing your body for Jesus. You know, you want to make sure your body is clean, looking nice and fresh. Not the one that bathes once in a week. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. I heard all sorts of things from my brethren. You know, sometimes you see, you see someone, the person is looking clean in the office. Enter the house, dog poo everywhere. And you are wondering, how do, <laughs> and you are wondering, how does this person live? How, how is this person alive? Eh? Glory to God. No wonder God put love word cleaners in place. So that, <laughs> that some of you can see this. Otherwise, if you had not seen these things, how, how would you have ever known? You would not have known and not observed some of these characters. Thank God for your life. Hallelujah. You're clean inside out. Clean inside out. Glory to God. New wine in new wine skins. Praise God. New friends this year. Glorious friends. There's nothing wrong with you having billionaires as friends. There's nothing wrong in you having multi-millionaires as friends. There's nothing wrong in you having successful people as friends. In fact, maybe some of you that have contact with successful people, it's time for you to start connecting them in the house of God for mentorships. See a man of God, 1st of January. Bringing grand commander of this, grand commander of that. And connecting them to Fala people. Even bringing ambassador, well, I can't quite remember her name. Wonderful ambassador with her wonderful tales and resting her case. <laughs> Glory to God. Those are the women that don't look face. Glory to God. Powerful women. They are very powerful. That, that, that word, as she was talking, did you see some of the, and, and what? Alpha eh? Alpha, Alpha female, eh? Absolutely. Well, uh, uh, <laughs> whatever that means. <laughs> you know, as she was talking, you could see some of the youths in the place already staring up. If, if, if she continued talking like that, and she said, now take up your chairs and let's go and fight in the streets. You would have seen people carry chair. Bah! We are going to the streets now. <laughs> people that can move others. That's a woman of substance. You can copy that from her. The ability to talk to others and motivate them to act and stir up things in them. Whether right, what's yours, you stir up right things. Yeah. And you will not tell people that there's no heaven or hell because you know the truth in God's word. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise God. So important. So you learn to drop old baggage and to move forward. Then number two thing, listen to the voice of God. When you get into a new level, Listen to the voice of God. That's so important. That's one of my secrets in life why it is impossible for anybody to destroy me. This is not boasting. It is impossible for anybody to destroy me spiritually, emotionally, mentally, physically, or otherwise. Because of this, sec this second thing I'm telling you. Listen to the voice of God. When you enter into a new level, listen to the voice of God. Sometimes that new level might seem as if it is a level that is a push downwards. All you just need is listen to the voice of God. While you are in that state, God will speak to you and tell you the great things that lie ahead of you. In the midst of that situation. I'm telling you that's what Joseph must have listened to. That even though he was in the pit. The testimony was still in him. Even when he was in Potiphar's house. The testimony was still in him. Even in jail. 
the testimony was still in him. He never forgot what God said. Never forget what God tells you. And in a new situation, listen to the voice of God. I remember years back, Pastor, Pastor told us about a man has just been made a chief executive officer of a bank. And then, wow, he's celebrating. And he goes to go and resume duties. And then, why he goes there, he's so happy. I mean, he has just thrown a party the night before that he's now the new CEO of XYZ Bank. And then he gets to the office and from the gate, even the gate man is clapping for him. Then he enters into the office, everybody's celebrating. New CEO has come. Hey, new CEO has come. And then he goes and he puts his bum on the chair and just goes, bah! And from there, his child is like, ah! Ah! He has been paralyzed. From there, they come to carry him out of the place to the hospital. He's become a paralyzed man. He sat down without listening to the voice of God. There were other people who contested for that seat. They were not there. There might have even been other people in that same environment, that same atmosphere who contested for that seat. And they have planted the tomokbo for him. And kept it. <laughs> Said, you, you, you will never rise up from this seat. And he comes there without listening to the voice of God. He just comes there and puts himself there. And lands. 